Greetings to the HopeWorks trainees. Hola, ni hao, bom dia, what's up? Joseph Kursky here. I've been asked to say hello and to provide a basic introduction to geographic information systems. What it is, why it matters, why you should care about it, and how you can use it at HopeWorks and in your own pathway forward. Now, GIS is one of the technologies that you use at HopeWorks and is one of your social enterprises. GIS is actually the reason why I learned about HopeWorks in the first place. It was way back about 15 years ago when I listened to some of your predecessors, your student youth colleagues, present at one of our, my organization's annual GIS conferences. I know a GIS conference might sound like a super boring thing, but it was actually really exciting. They always are. Anyway, the most inspiring thing was your HopeWorks colleagues presenting their information. And I thought, this is amazing. These students are so inspirational. I've got to find out more about HopeWorks. So I did, and I visited you twice over those last 15 years. I also became a good friend to Luis Olivieri, and we talk all the time about GIS, education, life, all kinds of things. So what we want you to bring forward from this is Luis and I, we're lifelong learners. We're still learning about GIS. We've been using it our whole careers, and we want to encourage you to be a lifelong learner too. So let me ask you this. What are you interested in? It could be safe streets, litter, climate, animals, energy, water, running a business, transportation, health care, social work. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever you care about, will have a where component. Donde, where, vo. That's where GIS comes in. You could be interested in working in business, government, nonprofits, schools, or higher education. GIS is not just about where things are on the planet, but why things are where they are. Why are cities located where they are? Why is Camden located where it is? And how will they be affected by their proximity to nearby things and by global interconnections, trade and other things? What is the relationship between accidents and crosswalks in a community? How does acid mine drainage in a mountain range affect downstream water quality? How will climate change affect global food production? All these are the whys of where questions. Now, zooming in on a satellite image to look at deforestation, visualizing the retreat of a glacier, navigating a trail on your phone. These are commonplace activities nowadays. People have always been fascinated with investigating their home, the Earth. Now, by the way, I have a map tie on just in your honor today. For centuries, maps have stirred imaginations and inspired explorations of the unknown. Now, far from the static documents of the past, paper, wood blocks, clay tablets that maps used to be printed on, today's maps can be, can be analyzed, interacted with, and combined with other maps, satellite imagery, charts, and to examine patterns, relationships, and trends. Now, these maps and the everyday activities I described earlier are possible because of geotechnologies or geographic information systems. Other components of geotechnologies are GPS or global positioning systems, or more broadly, global navigation satellite systems, web mapping, and remote sensing, looking at the world from aircraft, satellites, UAVs, drones, etc. Now, the technologies don't stand alone. They are effective because people using them have cultivated the spatial framework, a way of looking at the world from a, a geographic perspective by examining patterns, relationships, and trends in order to make smarter, wiser, happier decisions for the 21st century so we can build more sustainable, healthier communities. These decisions include planning urban greenways, mitigating invasive weeds, uh, locating the optimal site for a wind energy farm, studying groundwater, withdrawal and the impact on aquifers from a local to global scale. Now, I'm interested in, for example, walkability. I use GIS to gather information about how walkable a neighborhood is, and then I map that information, and then I use it to make changes in the community. This illustrates what GIS is, for example. Take a look at this map, median age of the population. It changes depending on the scale I'm using. It could be in 2D or 3D. The I part is the 
the, the information, the database behind the map could be a, a linked set of databases. Think of a spreadsheet that's geo-enabled, that's mappable. And the S part links the map, the G part, and the I, the information part, together. So you can look at the pattern of median age at multiple scales. Now, who cares about median age? Well, let's say you're locating a certain kind of business or a service to the community. You want to find, maybe you're, you're marketing, a, I don't know, a skateboard park. You probably wouldn't want to pick, unless you know a lot of 80-year-olds that go skateboarding. Maybe there are some. But you probably want to pick a neighborhood that has a lot of young people in it, right? Uh, conversely, if you're marketing some sort of service to specifically seniors, you're going to want to pick a neighborhood that has a lot of seniors. You know what I mean? So median age... It has to do with not just those things, but where are schools going to be located? What about transportation services, bus routes, etc.? So that's just one variable that you can map and analyze in ArcGIS Online, which is a certain kind of GIS. How many of you have seen the JHU coronavirus COVID dashboard? Probably millions of people have looked at that per hour for the last 10 months. This uses the same tools that I used for my walkability map, ArcGIS Online. Now, ArcGIS Online is one kind of web GIS. It's a set of tools, data, and most importantly, a user community, people. You have access at HopeWorks to these same tools. Now, oftentimes, when we're in school or in a education program, we, we kind of wonder, well, when am I ever going to use this in the real world, right after I graduate out of this program? Well, with GIS, you will use these tools. You can build maps and web apps. You can do coding or programming. In JavaScript and Python, the things that actually power these maps, you could collect data in the field, you could do spatial analysis on the data, you could communicate the results of your research, uh, of the discoveries that you're making to others, and there's a lot of things you could do with GIS. So a GIS is more than just a bunch of data and a bunch of tools, it's people, it's a decision-making system. Increasingly, it's running in the cloud. Now think of your music. You've got some music locally, but increasingly you have music in the cloud, right? Pandora, Apple Music, Amazon Music, etc. Think of your spreadsheets or your word process documents. You've got some that are local to your device, your phone, your computer, but you also have stuff in the cloud. OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. Why? So you have increased security, storage space, and also so you can collaborate. That's really important. Uh, with GIS because the issues that we talked about earlier, climate, population, natural resources, natural hazards, health, etc., they transcend disciplinary boundaries. What do I mean by that? They're not just geography. They're not just planning. They're not just health. They're sociology. They're economics. They're engineering, right? There are all kinds of different disciplines, and they also transcend political boundaries. They're not just Camden. They're not just Philadelphia. They're not just New Jersey. They transcend they're not just the USA, they're global, and they also transcend physical boundaries like a watershed or an ecoregion or a biome. They transcend all those things. So we, we need multiple people with diverse perspectives to weigh in to solve these problems. And that's why it's really important, in my opinion, to have GIS in this cloud-based environment. It's also easier to learn once it's in the cloud, and it's easier to access. So... GIS is a technology that you can feel good about. It's being used by your local government, by your school district, by your transportation department, by the EPA, World Health Organization, United Nations Environment Program, the, the Jane Goodall Elephant Foundation. I mean, global to global agencies to build a better world. That's why I say that GIS is a technology you can feel good about. It's not just some technology you're using for to get a good career. And that's good, but or to to you know to get some good skills, and that's good too. But but you can actually know that you're you're building a better world through GIS. Now HopeWorks is a great place to learn about GIS. So I salute you for choosing HopeWorks. Also, there are other resources. How can you start learning more about GIS? Well, there's the learn.arcgis.com body of lessons. There are massive open online courses through the ESRI MOOC program, free available courses. My own video channel about uh, how to learn more about GIS. It's called the Our Earth Channel, the ESRI Academy, colleges and universities, ebooks, printed books, also events where you can meet people that are using GIS. So the point is, folks, let's say you're passionate about something, okay? It's good to have passion. And it's good to have energy about it, and it's good to have a desire to do something good in the world. But to have GIS as one of the tool sets, one of the tools on your tool belt, 
you can take that passion and then actually contribute to an organization and bring some skills to that organization. So you're you're working in your field, what you really want to do, but you're also bringing some value. See what I mean to that organization? And GIS is one of, not saying it's the only one, but it's one of those key skills that can really help you launch into your future in a really effective way and contribute to solving our world's most pressing problems. So I salute you for picking HopeWorks. Thanks for listening to this, and I wish you all the best in the future. Map on. Mm-hmm.